and still we grappled. Our rolling bodies pushed things out of the garden, worms and scurrying life from the fertile soil, wet things from the pools and the leaves. They came out into the madness of primordial space. They thrashed and became large. But by then, it didn't matter. The game was over. The garden had given birth to creation. The rules were in place, and there would never be a second chance. We played in the cosmos now. We played for everything. Welcome back, Guardians. In today's Destiny Lore video, we are revisiting the Unveiling Lore Book. This lore book was first introduced with Shadowkeep, and the entries have been drip-fed, similar to what Bungie did with the curse on the Dreaming City. One of the entries in the Unveiling Lore Book seems to explain the creation story of the Vex, which is super cool, so stick around to hear more. If you are looking for other kind of gaming content from me, please feel free to check out my second YouTube channel, it will be the first link in the description below. And of course, the artwork at the beginning of this video was by Gamma Trap. You can support Gamma Trap using the Patreon link below. All Patreon donations go towards paying Gamma Trap for his artwork. This is Mullen Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Just to make sure everyone is on the same page, let me give you a summary of the first six entries in the Unveiling Lore Book. Their entries are written from the perspective of the darkness, with the intention to convince us that the darkness is necessary. The darkness is not evil, the light is not good, it is all required for balance. The light is referred to as the Gardener, and the darkness is referred to as the Winnower. They are these cosmic forces that exist in balance before time itself, before anything exists. The light creates and the darkness destroys, therefore maintaining balance. The light and the darkness initially followed a set of rules to maintain this balance. These set of rules was known as the flower game. Following the rules of the game formed a pattern, the pattern of life. The gardener, i.e. the light, becomes fed up with the game and the pattern, because the pattern demands what must live must also die. Have a listen to the lore entry, The Final Shape. It reads, It always ends the same, the gardener complained. This one stupid pattern. The gardener got up and brushed their knees. Every game we play, this one pattern consumes all the others, wipes out every interesting development, a stupid, boring exploit that cuts off entire possibility spaces from ever arising. There's so much that we'll never get to see because of this pest. So the light no longer wants to follow the rules, and so begins to try and change the game, change the pattern of life. During this moment, the light and the dark become active participants in the game. They are no longer maintaining balance, but rather trying to outdo each other. The more the light tries to create, the more the darkness needs to destroy. Have a listen to the first knife lore entry, where the darkness discovers the first knife, which is symbolic of having to cut away the excess that the light continues to make. It reads, No, the gardener said. I am growth and preservation of complexity. I will make myself into a law in the game. And thus we too become part of the game, and the laws of the game become gnomic and open to change by our influence. And I had only one purpose and one principle in the game, and I could do nothing but continue to enact that purpose, because it was all that I was and ever would be. I looked at the gardener. I looked at my hands. I discovered the first knife. So, in the past I speculated that the role of the Vex was to try and restore and maintain the pattern of life. They are not good, bad, evil or otherwise. Their job is to restore the balance, restore the pattern, which is why Osiris says that the only thing that matters to the Vex is the pattern. For the most part this was speculation, however now we have the rest of the unveiling law book. The next entry, T equals zero, describes the gardener and the winnower battling, thrashing, wrestling within the garden, and this chaos seemed to create the universe, multiple universes even, and also seemed to push life into those universes. It is pretty confusing, and I definitely could be wrong, but have a listen, it reads. We wrestled in the garden, in the loam of possibility, where nothing existed and everything might. I shadowed agony among the flowers. We trampled the petals beneath our feet, we stomped the fruit to pulp, and we ground the seeds into the dust. 
Our trampling feet made waves in the garden, which were the fluctuations around which the infant universes coalesced their first structures. The dilation field yawned beneath existence. Symmetries snapped like glass, like creases, flaws in space-time collected filaments of dark matter that inhaled and kindled the first galaxies of suns. And still we grappled, our rolling bodies pushed things out of the garden, worms and scurrying life from the fertile soil, wet things from the pools and the leaves. They came out into the madness of primordial space, they thrashed and became large. But by then, it didn't matter. The game was over. The garden had given birth to creation. The rules were in place and there would never be a second chance. We played in the cosmos now. We played for everything. And the patterns in the flowers, terrified by our contention, were no longer the inevitable victors of a game whose rules had suddenly changed. And they passed into the newborn cosmos to escape us. It is a bit confusing, but in my mind, I imagine these cosmic forces battling and fighting, and the chaos caused by their fighting is pushing all of this life out of the garden, pushing it out of the garden and into the newly born universe. This is reinforced by the very next lore entry, which is called Cambrian Explosion. In real life, the Cambrian Explosion is an event that occurred 541 million years ago, and this event refers to the sudden appearance in the fossil record of complex animals with mineralized skeletal remains. The darkness claims it created this complex life, because for there to be complex life, organisms needed to evolve through becoming a predator, through destroying another organism. Have a listen to the lore entry, The Cambrian Explosion. It reads, In the beginning, your world was a garden too. The whole floor of the world sea was a mat of bacteria, and the very first animals, adorable blobs of ooze, grazed upon the mat in endless idol. They had no concept of the existence of other beings. Why would they? Their most complex function was a kind of gentle spasm, to scoot forward while they grazed. And if they bumped into each other on that warm seabed, all they did was ooze onward, untroubled. There was nothing to their life except the uptake of carbon compounds from the bacterial bed. And then, one day, the fall occurred. So much earlier and so much more necessary than your myths remember. Some poor mutant discovered that it could collect carbon compounds much faster if it stopped grazing on the bacterial mat and started dissecting and eating the lumps of pre-digested carbon all around it. Its neighbour ooze balls. It couldn't help but do it. It couldn't help but thrive. We don't get a choice about the rules. We just play the game. It was the first defector, the first predator. It changed everything. Now the ooze balls needed sensors to watch for danger and brains to integrate those sensors and generate plans of survival and swift neurons and muscles to enact the plan. This was the Cambrian explosion, the great birth of complex life on your world. I caused it. I the defector, the destroyer, the one who takes. Now you might be wondering, well, how does all of this relate to the creation of the Vex, the origin of the Vex? Well, when the light and the dark battled in the garden and pushed out life into the universe, I believe a primitive form of the Vex, a precursor to the Vex, was also sent into the universe. The pattern itself was pushed into the universe, into creation, where it would evolve into the Vex. Have a listen to the law entry, Patternfall. It reads, The patterns that escaped the garden landed in the water. Of course, there was no water at first. The patterns were abstract waves tumbling through the fire of the early universe, trapped in chaos cycling through desperate self-preservation tautologies while vast beings from beyond the narrow dominion of cause and effect thrashed and battled around them. For an eon, they were nothing but screaming equation vermin scurrying through the quantum foam, fleeing ultimate erasure. But they were tenacious. They propagated in the saline meltwater of comets orbiting the first stars. That broth of chemicals became their substrate, and they learned to catalyze impossible chemistry with quantum tricks. 
Then they range from the sky into the steaming seas of fellow worlds, and there they build their first housing from geometry and silica. In all their transformations, they retain that kernel of ultimate self-sufficiency that had made them victors in the flower game. But they are not incontrovertibly destined to rule this cosmos. They were made before light and darkness, but the rules are different now, and even this pattern must adapt. They are not all mine, not in the way that admirers such as my man Oryx are mine, utterly devoted to the practice of my principle, but some of them have, nonetheless, found their way home. So cool. Even though this entry does not confirm these beings as the Vex, there are plenty of hints. For example, we know that the Vex are actually the fluid inside the robotic bodies, and this entry talks about how they propagated in the saline meltwaters of comets, and then how they build their housing from geometry and silica, not to mention that they came from the pattern itself, the original pattern in the garden that was meant to maintain balance. I believe when the darkness says some have found their way home, the darkness is talking about the Vex in the Black Garden, the Vex that returned to the Black Garden. This law entry for me confirms the origins of the Vex, their creation story, and not only that, but confirms my previous speculation. The main goal of the Vex is to re-establish the pattern and maintain balance in the universe. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word Pattonfall, which is a lore entry that describes the evolution of the Vex after they were expelled from the garden. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace. <laughs>